In just two weeks, the Super Mario movie became the highest grossing video game adaptation ever, and by a huge margin too. And as a recording, the movie has made over $800 million in the box office, which is just a crazy number. But what's even crazier is the movie hasn't even released in Japan yet, so to say the movie was a success is an understatement. But was the movie actually good? Now first thing I need to talk about with this movie, the first thing you'll probably notice immediately is how how incredible the animation is. This movie looks amazing. It just does. Just watching the trailers, you kind of knew the animation would be good. Like, as you'd expect from a Mario movie, it has all these different settings that it takes place in. It goes from a really dark and brooding setting to then a completely colourful and happy setting. And it just all works beautifully with the animation. Illumination just done a really good job with this. And even just the fight sequences throughout the movie were really good. Especially towards the end of the movie. So if you're wondering if this movie is going to look good, you won't be disappointed. Next thing I need to talk about is the references throughout this movie because Jesus Christ, they went all out. They did not give two shits. They honestly went wild with the references in this movie. There were tons of different characters in the background or having a small cameo throughout the movie that you'd recognise from the games and even little tiny references that most people would probably not even notice except for Die Hard Mario fans. So yeah, it has all of that here, which is also to be expected because, come on, it's a Mario movie. That, like So many people love this franchise. But another thing to note is it's not intrusive. You know, it's not like every time a new character comes on that a lot of people may know that it starts playing some applause from a crowd and playing some sitcom music. <laughs> None of it's really intrusive, it's literally just, you know, showing them in the background or having a really, really short cameo where they say, uh, like, maybe a line and then it moves on. Now, one important factor of this movie that a lot of people are probably a bit worried about are the voice acting performances. Now, let me just say, I think all the main voice actors done an amazing job in this movie. Some better than others, but I think they all done a good job at least. Which is kind of surprising because when this movie was announced and you got to see all the actors that were voicing these characters, it caught a lot of people off guard. Because Jesus Christ, this was an A-list actor casting for this. Like, the, everyone you could think of. Chris Pratt. He's so cool. That's the most judged one, you know, before it came out. Some of the lines he had during the trailers were a bit, a bit dodgy. Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. But honestly, I was surprised. He done a good job. I don't think he was bad as Mario. I actually think he fit it fairly well. And that's from someone who thought going into this movie that he'd probably be pretty bad, especially going off some of the lines in the trailers. But honestly, the lines they played in the trailers were like the worst lines that he had in the movie. It's like they were trying to make him look bad. And also some of them even got removed from the movie. I'll say that right now. There was one in particular that was quite bad in the trailers that wasn't even, you know, in the movie at all. So I feel like they saw the backlash and were just, just quickly cut out in editing. You know, they were just like, nah, we're not risking this. Jack Black, as you've probably heard at some point by now, because I am a bit late to this review, which is my bad. He was fantastic in this. The energy he put into the role of Bowser was insane. I did not think he would fit that role. I actually thought that was one of the weirdest cast choices. Just from seeing the actor and thinking of the character, I could not see that working. But I am happy to say I was completely wrong. Like, Jack Black is known to put his all into most roles you'll see him in. But this was like, this was a lot. He, he done a lot here. Honestly, I would say this casting was perfect for him, which is weird to say when I thought it would not work at all, but yeah, it worked. Charlie Day as Luigi, perfect casting right there. When I saw that casting, that was one of the rare actors in that reveal that I knew would fit perfectly. Like, I, I just imagine Charlie Day as Luigi. Like, it's, it's just, like, come on. Like, just from seeing how he acts in its always sunny in Philadelphia. I could just tell he would be a good fit for this role, like immediately. And Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong honestly was surprisingly good as well. I did not imagine that at all. He fit the role fairly well. Even his laugh fit with the role. It's a laugh I imagine Donkey Kong would have. And then Keegan Michael Key as Toad. That was one that caught me off guard as well. I've got to be honest because I could not imagine him playing Toad of all characters. That just caught me off guard. But he played it remarkably 
remarkably well. To the point where when I was hearing him, if I didn't know he was cast for the role, I would have no idea that he was playing Toad. So I think that pretty much says it all. Honestly, I was surprised at how consistent the voice acting was in this movie. I think there was only one character in this entire movie that I felt was off with voice acting. And that was Cranky Kong. A lot of you probably didn't even know that was his name because he's not a big character in this movie or in Mario or Donkey Kong games in general. So it's really not that big of a deal. It's not like he was one of the main characters in the movie. I mean, he played a bit of a role, but it's not like he had a lot of screen time. But when he was talking during it, I, I have to say, I just, it was a bit weird. His voice just didn't really Bit, but it wasn't the biggest deal ever and only having one character that I think didn't really fit the voice for what I was expecting for this movie is a pretty big success I would say. There is one other character I had a bit of a problem with in the movie not because of their voice acting but more just because of the character in general. I don't even remember his name in the movie I might show it on screen if I find it but he was basically the stereotypical douchebag you know he was just the the guy that would mess with the main characters a bit and kind of be the the star villain I guess before you know the actual villain the movie shows up but I just don't know why he was in this movie like I won't spoil anything like with the actual story but his role in the movie to put Mario and Luigi down wasn't really needed. Like, it just wasn't necessary at all. He was literally just there to be a character you can point at and be like, ah, oh, you're, you're a prick, you. I, I don't like you. And then he disappears for the entire movie. Like, he's not important at all. And then at the end of the movie, he just kind of shows up, changes his tune, you know, like a stereotypical thing where the character that didn't like the main characters now likes the main character, like that kind of thing. And I guess the character is trying to, like, justify more reason for the way that this movie ends which I'll get on to because I think the ending of this movie was pretty bad. I won't spoil it or anything, but I'll mention it vaguely later. I just think that character in general was weird. I don't know why he was in it at all. It's just another character in the movie where I was like, you know, why are you even here? And the story of this movie in general, I mean, what, what can you expect? It's a Mario movie. You're not going into it expecting a brilliant masterpiece, like masterfully written plot. All of it's fine. It's serviceable. The, the pacing is a bit nuts sometimes you know it can go a bit crazy it can go from like one thing to the next and you're like what the hell what jesus christ but it's nothing that major and it's also a thing of it's a family film it's got a kind of juggle two audiences here you know it's that's a factor with movies like this that you have to keep in mind the only part of the story that was really noticeably bad like i was saying earlier is the ending the ending of this movie is extremely rushed honestly the the pace that it goes from you know looking like it's going one direction and then completely switching to a completely different outcome is a bit fucking mad i'm not gonna lie and i also just didn't like basically the consequences of the ending the movie doesn't even brush over it at all it, it literally just keeps its pace that it had executing the ending and then kind of skips the actual consequences of it which i just don't like at all even if it's a bit more light-hearted and the story isn't all there anyway i I still just don't like that. Having an ending that's just that rushed and has so many consequences that aren't even looked at at all is a bit weird. I feel like some people are going to have a problem with the origins of Mario and Luigi in this movie and basically how they're managed in this movie. I don't want to spoil anything, but personally I liked it. I, I liked the dynamic that it tried to do here, at least until the end of the movie. Then it kind of ruined it a bit. Next thing I really liked about the movie Movie, though was music. Music was amazing in this movie. It was honestly a pretty big highlight for me. As you'd expect, it has a lot of Mario music, which were just used at the perfect times. Like, for example, when they would be using carts, it would be using Mario Kart music that you'd recognize if you played Mario Kart. And when they went to a jungle kind of area of the movie, it would start playing jungle theme music from the games. Even at some points when you're introduced to Bowser in this movie, it starts playing the Mario game galaxy boss music which if you've played mario galaxy and you've heard that music it fucking slaps the amount of times they do that in this movie 
is mad. Like I said, with references in general in this movie, they went wild. And they done the exact same thing with the music, which I love. They could have easily played it like a normal animated movie, which to be fair, they do a couple times in this where they play, you know, just famous music that everyone knows. They do that a couple times in the movie. It doesn't fit for one of the scenes in particular. It's a bit weird, but for the most part anyway, they just use their own music and just change it slightly, which is great. And now I'm going to get to a couple negatives. Now, obviously there was that negative I said earlier about, you know, the movie's ending and how that all played out. I just wanted to mention it as I was talking about the story and characters and all that because, you know, it made sense to mention it there. But another thing I didn't really like, or I think could have been done better, is having more variation in enemies throughout the movie. Basically, most of the enemies they come across during this movie are just Koopas. I mean, it's fine. Like, for a first movie as well, I know they won't want to go overboard with how many different things they fit into it, but there's just so much they can do with different enemies, you know, from all throughout the Mario franchise. There's so many they can pick from, and I just feel like it's a bit boring going with just Koopas. It's like, you know, you're like bland kind of enemy from the Mario games. And it's weird as well because there's even moments where you see all these different enemies that they can use in the movie. Like when they're meeting with Bowser or like Mario's exploring and he sees all these things in the background that are going around him and all that. And none of them are really used in the movie except for either a quick background reference or just like a, a wee moment to show them off and throw a wee one-liner out there. But yeah, they aren't actually really used in the movie and the one part of the movie where there are a lot of different enemies and just character references in general it kind of just cuts away as soon as you know like they're about to start fighting and show them off which is yeah a bit disappointing not gonna lie but yeah I, I just wish i saw a bit more from that like there are a couple bits where you see a wee bit of action from different kind of enemies but and it's not really something that affected me watching it at the time either or anything like that it was literally just something i thought about afterwards so it's really not a big deal but one thing i thought about during the movie was how little luigi was really used because like i said earlier charlie day is Luigi was really fucking good. He was like the perfect casting for that role, but he wasn't really used in the movie very much. At the same time, I understand why he's not used. He's basically used as a motivation for Mario's actions in the movie, which I get. And they basically wanted to use Luigi as the one that Mario has to save instead of Peach, who's a lot more skilled and just experienced than she would be in the games, which I think is a fine change. It just sucks that it's Luigi that has to be hindered in the movie for the plot, so it does suck. I do think they could have went a different direction with the story if they wanted to and made it so Luigi didn't need to be captured, but at the same time, I do understand that they kind of had to go down that route a wee bit just because it made a lot more sense for, like I said, Mario's motivations. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a a split thing where it's like i understand why they done it but it's still annoying that they done it but yeah that's pretty much my review of the movie this uh video went on a bit long and also yes i am a bit late to this uh, i watched the movie quite late because i'm just a bot but overall the movie was really good as i expected it was just a fun movie where i could just turn off my brain for a bit and just enjoy it which i guess you could also say for the games as well so i mean it's on brand like yeah if you're super critical of the movie like most critics of the movie right now seem to be then you'll have some complaints and find some flaws throughout the movie, I'm sure. But even then, I would still say it's a good movie. Especially if you're a big fan of the Mario games. Which I can guarantee the majority of critics that don't like the movie probably aren't. So personally, I give this movie 8 spinies out of 10. And yes, I did have to search up what the fuck these guys were called, because I actually had no idea. So yeah. That's about it. Tell me what you guys thought about the movie in the comments. I'd like to hear some different opinions on it. And if you want to see more reviews like this, leave a like on the video so I know you've enjoyed it. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.